listen, I don't like being a negative person, but there's quite a few things that irk me about season three and what we've seen so far since the seasonal launch, and especially as of recently with some of the latest updates we had for Modern Warfare 2. Today, I wanted to get some stuff off my chest. Then from there, pending no additional hiccups, we can go back to just normal reporting about updates, news, cool stuff that I like in COD and other FPS games here. But as the year is gone, who knows how long that will last. But as we go along, drop your thoughts down below. What do you think of all of this? Are you satisfied with where we are right now, where we're starting to maybe get some communication? Are you guys hoping for more? Whatever the case, drop your thoughts below. But if you enjoyed the video, you'll find it at all insightful. Do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing to stay today with all things FPS related. But for now, let's jump into it. So totally upfront, this video was scheduled initially for Saturday or Sunday. And as a result, kind of had to jumble, change some of the direction and where this video is going, scratch some things out of it, because now there's new things in the discussion that apologies if there's any sort of like weird flow with how this conversation goes. And if the tone is slightly shifted, because today's official Call of Duty account actually did something that I initially had a lot of criticism for in this video, still do, we'll talk about in a second, but I did not see coming. But the official Call of Duty account finally acknowledged a major issue with Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone 2. They tweeted, we are investigating reports of server-related gameplay issues and are actively working to resolve them. That is the first time in my recent memory where something like this has been addressed by the official accounts on such a scale. Not just like the studios of Infinity Ward, Raven, or in those cases of Vanguard and Cold War, Sledgehammer, and Treyarch. This instead didn't go out to the 3.1 million followers of Infinity Ward, not the 849,000 followers of Raven's Twitter, but instead the 4.6 million followers on the official Call of Duty accounts, amplified by the subsidiary studios with retweets maximizing that exposure. We hardly ever see things on a gameplay sense tweeted out from the official Call of Duty account. Mostly we end up seeing that just reserved for like marketing, which we'll talk about in just a second of like bundles and everything, or if there's a new seasonal update coming, we'll see teasers and everything like that going through those channels. But officially talking about issues and problems with the game, that's finally something that I'm all on board for here with this. Because for those that don't know, servers have been abysmal since Season 3's launch. Things like basically playing on a flipbook exist in some of those matches, where some of them are completely unplayable in regards to, even just on the smaller side of things, things like the latency counter in your telemetry settings, that's been entirely wrong, showing next to zero milliseconds of ping, yet people are lagging out of games or rubber banding across the map. So I certainly don't want to apply applaud anyone for the bare minimum, but thank you for finally acknowledging one of the big problems at hand. There's still a plenty number of them that we can talk about and things that I would love to see tackled, one of which actually was something that a community member put together quite a bit here. Chad, link down there in the description below to this, put together a Trello board of a ton of different publicly sourced issues with the game that are either not on the official Trello board or have not been acknowledged in any way, shape, or form that have persisted so that hopefully, fingers crossed, some of these can get tackled here, if not all of them. I feel like that's a weird thing right now where we don't even have enough visibility on some of the main issues with the game since we're not seeing even the Trello board updated officially. And while yes, it is nice to see one of these finally acknowledged, finally have an open investigation into issues with the server, that kind of just leads into the next point here where for myself and I'm sure plenty of other people, the overall frustration kind of just comes from a lack of communication and just a lack of really anything pertaining to game fixes for quite some time. One thing that I said over on Twitter the other day is a much smaller thing by comparison, but it's kind of like a general example that I can give that some things are still persisting since even the beta. If you guys have noticed at all, or maybe you haven't, if you look at a kill cam, we have perk packages this year, right? We don't have regular perks, but instead we have perk packages. Since the beta, we have not had kill cams accurately show the bonus and ultimate perks of perk packages. That has been a problem that has not shown up since the beta, which was what, like seven months ago at this point now? So there's plenty of things that still persist even since then, but also larger gameplay impacting things that have persisted since season three, since maybe season 2.5, maybe season two that players have ended up having issue with. And so where's the communication on any of that stuff? The frustration that I have is right now a lack of prioritization with that communication with fixes because the game's not in the best of state. It hasn't been. But beyond that newly mentioned server investigation, which is where now this kind of comes down to the part of the video, like I mentioned, was previously planned for later this weekend, there's been zero communication on real issues. But you know what we have seen? Well, since Season 3 launched, we've seen three full-on trailers for Black Cell, the paid cash upgrade for the Battle Pass on their YouTube channel, which is 
50% of all the videos posted for season three, by the way. Only six of them total for season three, and three of them are about Black Saw and that $30 upgrade. We've also seen four, maybe five, depending on when this video goes up, tweets explicitly about Black Cell since the seasonal launch, one almost every other day at this point, averaging amidst other announcements of like free to play weekends starting as of yesterday. So there's just this pure prioritization of cosmetics and bundles as well that it's just, it's frustrating to see this stuff hammered home so much. I mean, we have those DMZ pay to win things. We have Black Cell, Black Cell, Black Cell being hammered into our heads. And then on top of that, we have so many things in the shop being pushed that are, well, not even necessarily being marketed, but they're just reselling bundles we've seen so many times before. I mean, just to rattle off a few here, a couple of that I've seen around the community thrown out there, the Ectoplasmic Tac V and Research MX9 come along for 2,000 COD points in a bundle this year, but that was the Tactical Human 3's bundle Vespertine MP7 for 2,000 COD points back in Modern Warfare 2019, that same exact pattern and texture. The Fluorescence Tac M, Super Bloom MCPR 300, and the Floral Axis X13 Auto came along for 2,000 COD points in Modern Warfare 2, but that was taken directly from the Tracer Pack Sakura Edition for the Mario Ram 7 and the Himeji Og for 1800 COD points back in Modern Warfare 2019. The Macabre RPK and Dread Rites Mini Bok is the Dark Rituals bundle for 2400 COD points, but that's the Malphus blueprint pattern from the Season 6 Tier 100 reward of the AS Val in Modern Warfare 2019. The Season 2 Raid bundle is quite literally the gold camo from Modern Warfare 2019 out of the M13B and Lockman sub. I mean, the names of the blueprints are literally 2019 and retrospective, all for another 2,000 COD points. The Super Heat Chimera blueprint is literally just a Masters camo from Modern Warfare 2019. The TAC M World Cup reward is quite literally the same pattern as the Modern Warfare 2019 Combat Pack blueprint for On the Volley of the Aug. The Vaporizer blueprint and the Dr. Kushlov bundle is the exact same thing as the Dr. Karlov Lives bundle from the original Haunting of Verdansk. The classic Ghost skin, well, Never mind the fact that we have the DMZ bonuses with that. We've been sold that skin three times now. Modern Warfare 2019, either with a standalone bundle or with the Modern Warfare 2 campaign remastered bundle. Also, though, in air quotes as a bonus as the Vault Edition that gave you access to it if you did not have it already in Modern Warfare 2019 with the pre-order for Modern Warfare 2. But then we have to buy it again in Modern Warfare 2. So, like... What the hell is this COD turned into in regards to cosmetics, in regards to selling just everything and not focusing on the gameplay itself? So like, while yes, we finally, finally seen mention of an issue that is absolutely needed to be addressed, I just think that it's the tip of the iceberg and what needs to be done. Like, I get COD as a business, I understand that, but there's a time and place for marketing things that just shines a negative light on stuff if you keep doing it. At a certain point, the whole mentality of like, just truck through it, it doesn't work. To me, we just gotta tackle that important stuff first, like that Trello board that Chad ended up putting together, like a lot of things that have been reported and just go by the wayside. We have to tackle that stuff before we can really even, in my mind, think, okay, that's, I don't know if moral's the word for it or what, but like, the priorities just need to be shifted, man. You need to have a game that works and people want to play if you want to sell stuff to people. I mean, that's just the way I see it, but I mean, that's kind of where I'm at here with this. It's nice that we finally see some acknowledgement, but I still think that there is quite a way to go. And I guess, I guess that's kind of what the conversation boils down to. I don't know how much more I can have to offer in regards to what contributes to this. So I think that's just going to call it. So let me know your thoughts down below. What do you guys think of this here? There's been a lot on my mind recently with COD that's just been frustrating and I'd love for it to be fixed out, but will it happen? I guess we'll have to wait and see. But for now, let me know your thoughts down below. If you enjoyed the video, you found it out all insightful, do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing to stay up with all things Modern Warfare 2, Warzone 2, and anything COD related. But for now, thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.